Good morning, Zoom and Facebook. My name is Ariana. And I'm Ariel. And we just want to say thank you for coming on for this Zoom today. Yes, we really appreciate it. And make sure you guys type in the chat, tell us where you're from, what grade you're in, how old you guys are, all of that great stuff. And now, let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you for the students, just everybody. And we thank you for the service that it will go well, no interruptions. And we thank you just for this day, this time, everything that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, what's up, Zoe? What's up, Roger? What is up? What's up, students? No! <laughs> Make some noise in the chat! Uh, hey, yeah, go for it, go for it, y'all. Go for it. So, um, but what we're going to do, we're going to continue down this journey of the table. Um, how many of y'all learning something from the table? Hey, good morning, y'all. What we're going to do, we're going to do some snippets again this week as it relates to the table. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of just dive in and out as it relates to the table and what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to look at this and then I want you to come in on it. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you certain questions about it. And I want you to comment on it, okay? All right, so here's the first clip. As we left off where um, Jesus was inviting people to the table, and they, they didn't want to come to his table. They 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 made excuses. Up. Uh, they made excuses. So um, Zoe and Roger, have y'all ever made an excuse when you kind of sense God calling you to hit to the table. Have you ever made any excuse where, or even a friend or someone was calling you to go to a higher place in God? And have you ever made an excuse of, of, of not like, uh, because you, have you ever made an excuse as it relates to that? Okay, before we go any further, uh, we're talking about uh, coming to the table and sitting, making time for Jesus. But before we even dive into that, have you ever made an excuse for a time when somebody was just trying to hang out with you or if somebody wanted you to do something with them? Before we hear what Roger and Zoe is about to say, have you ever made any type of excuse to not do something that you were asked to do, but you really don't want to do it? Has that ever happened to you? Whether that's your parent asking you to do something you didn't want to do, has that ever happened to you? Just kind of throw it out. Just throw out your, your answers. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for answering. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let's let's jump back in. Let's see what jo Zoe and Roderick say. Yep. <laughs> just, yeah. just being tired. I'm like, God, I'm too tired to read the word. Yeah. And I'm also guilty of laying down and getting on TikTok. So that is, that's the reality. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. It's just, yeah. It just come down like just about balancing your time, you know, stuff like that. Cause that's for me too. Like I could be scrolling on Instagram, like, or YouTube, like looking at people's videos or like looking at these songs. Like, okay, let's see. Ooh, what can I react to? You know? And, um, time could just get away from you so like that's an excuse for me and then also fear can be an excuse for me sometimes when god calls me up i get scared and you know and sometimes it would make me revert back to the old things that i would struggle with but yeah so that was in some ways too yeah. that is so good go ahead so you just about to say something oh i was just saying like kind of like roger beard sometimes like if i fall into temptation or i sin it the devil tries to to give me this feeling of like you can't go to god like you can't read your bible right now like you're a terrible person for what you just did and it keeps me in bondage and makes me feel like you know yeah i can't i can't face him like that wow that, that that's so good that you all bring that out because um i even remember or i even struggle with when there are times where i don't get it right and I sometimes will struggle with, well, do God really want me at the table? Mm. You know, because of um, the way I've acted or the way I've responded or my lack of response or a, a, um, a wrong uh, look 
or whatever? And does he really like, he wants everybody at the table, but does he really want me at the table? Have uh, Type in the chat, young people, have you ever felt like that, dude? Does God even want me at the table? Uh, oh, hey, oh, wait, wait, let's pause right here. Listen, have you ever felt like God didn't want you at the table with him? Maybe because of your attitude, maybe because of something you've done. You know, I, I just ask y'all to type in the chat. Have you ever felt that way? But I want you to really, really chat in there. Have you ever felt that way? Okay. Okay, so so let me tell you this. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how much you messed up. I don't care what you said. God wants you. He wants you. And the thing about God the closer you get to God, the closer you get to him, the more you begin to act and become like him. How do you get to him? How do you get close to him? Hey, well, we got to get into, we got to read the, the, the word that he has left us. We got to get into it. We got to get into it. So, hey, thank you all for jumping in and typing in the chat. Listen. Transformation can take place. It can take place, but we got to get in uh, the scriptures with him. So uh, let's go to this next clip. Um, what you, you all have anything to say about that? It's definitely a challenge to even start understanding that God wants you at the table the most when after those times. And it's like, yeah. we get it backwards. Like God only wants me at the table when I'm good. Well, if the table is for him to help you, he really, really wants you there when you're like in the wrong. And it's, it's just sometimes kind of crazy how we forget that. But it's also one of those things where it's like, you have to try to remember that because that will help you to not fall in these little slumps of not talking to him or not being with him because you feel bad for what you've done. Uh, yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. Go ahead, Rod. Okay. I was just saying <clears throat> to add on to that. That's why it's like one thing that I hold dear to my heart and I do. And I know Zoe does as well, like confessions, words of affirmation, like telling yourself like I'm a child of God. I have peace, you know, or like even in the middle of a mistake, like even in the middle of it, like still praying to God in the middle of it and just saying like, I'm still a child of God, I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. Because honestly, man, miracles can be found in the mess. The mess that you could be going through, the, 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 the mistakes that you could have made, man, the miracles can be found in that. Like you could see God in a whole different way and that could break that chain of something that you've been struggling with for five years and you finally see it because miracles can be found in the mess i love that because once you recognize the miracle is found in your mess then mm -hmm. you're not gonna just look at somebody else's mess and judge their mess because you're gonna right. look at their mess and be like well if the miracle was found in mine how much more can the miracle be found in yours? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and sometimes we forget how messy we were and we don't even want to tell anybody else about how God can clean up their mess because uh, we didn't forget our mess. <laughs> uh, hey, all right, so listen. How many of y'all be judging everybody else mess? Like, you can see everybody else mess, but you can't even see your own. Or you see yours, but you don't want everybody, you don't want everyone else to see it or highlight it. How many, come on, how many of y'all be doing that sometimes? Just sometimes. Even in your own household with your siblings, how many of y'all do that? Listen, we gotta make sure we can't be doing that. Remember, we're following, we're following Jesus, we're following Christ, right? So, but look, hey, check out this next clip where it talks about our hearts. 
Check out this next clip. All right, thank y'all for engaging with me too. I appreciate it. Check out this next clip. Is the is the bedroom of my heart? Is it clean or is it dirty? Because sometimes it could be dirty. Sometimes it could be messy. Sometimes it could we could be hoarding stuff. We could be hoarding things that we need to let go of, hoarding insecurities that we need to let go of that the devil's been telling us for years and years and years. So that's the question we need to ask is, is the bedroom of my heart clean or dirty? And just let God, let him clean the room. Yeah. I like how you said bedroom too. Oh, I'm sorry, Minister Alon. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was just making the point. You like the bedroom, that's kind of crazy. Like that is where out of every room that I've ever, that I use in my house, my bedroom has to be the one that I have to clean the most. Because I stay here the most. I stay in the bedroom. You're on your, I'm on my phone in the bedroom. I come in here after I take my shower in the bedroom. I put on my lotion and my deodorant in the bedroom. I watch TV in the bedroom. I sometimes eat in the bedroom. Uh, you know, it's it's just everything. Oh, we y'all, listen, they talking about the heart. Listen, I just want to tell you a few scriptures, and I want you to look these up. One is Psalm 51, verse 10, and it says, create in me. It's, it's this guy named David, and he's praying to God. God, create in me a clean heart. He says, oh, God, renew a right spirit on the inside of me. I don't want to act like that, God. Put a right spirit on the inside of me. And then also in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus says, hey, he, he was saying, hey, those whose hearts are pure, they're blessed, and they shall see God. L listen, we want pure hearts so we can see God in other people, so we can see God in, in, in what we're doing in everyday life. If our, heart, our hearts are pure, um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says this, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flows everything in life so your heart the, the way your attitude your the way you respond your your spirit the way you are is so important and it's very important for us to watch and guard our hearts okay let's dive a little deeper don't forget guard your heart that's wow. so good. I, so and 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 th there were cer certain things that you guys said and and one of the things I feel like that uh, I don't want to just skate over was you have to in though in the the bedroom of our hearts we have to make sure we implant the word of God in the Ooh. bedroom of our hearts. Uh, because out of our heart flows the issues of life. And in order to get issues um, of the word of God to conform to the word of God, you have to put the word of God in your heart and let the word of God be bigger than any issue that can show up in your life. Um, because here's the deal. As, as we continue to live, issues going to show up, but yeah. issues never have to be greater than the word of God. Yeah. And uh, one is, is, there's some I am confessions. And I just want you all to say these confessions after me, because I heard Roderick say uh, about you got to affirm yourself. Uh, you got to say, so just say, I am a child of God. That's Romans 8, 16. I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So when the enemy tries to lock you down and make you feel like that that's, you ain't got no hope, that's the end for you. You need to say, I'm redeemed. I'm snatched up from out of the hand of any enemy. Um, that's Psalms 107, verse two. I am forgiven when the enemy tries to tell you that what you've done is unforgivable. You are a liar because the scripture says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 through 14, I am forgiven. 
I'm saved by grace through faith. So I may not even feel saved. I may not feel like God is next to me, but I don't walk by my feelings. I walk by faith. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. I am justified. Romans chapter five, verse one. I am sanctified. First Corinthians yeah. chapter six, verse 11. Listen, these I am confessions, it, they're on the website. Go to the website, download these um, and say them to yourself. Say, put this on the inside of your heart. Yeah. Put it on the inside of your heart because out of these flow the issues of life. What are y'all y'all about to jump in and say something? I, <laughs> yeah um put in something when you when you said that i instantly thought about like when you put the word of god on the inside of your heart going back to the bedroom analogy if i want my room clean i have to clean it i can't just i can't i can't bring the vacuum cleaner in here and just be like well because it just won't get clean and i think that's a good point because I used to struggle with like, okay, am I reading my Bible? Am I reading my Bible? Am I reading it every Ugh. single day? And I forgot to actually get the scriptures in my heart, actually go out into my day and apply them. Mm. And so when I was going through that and I'm like, you know, why do I not feel like there's growth happening? Why do I feel stuck or stagnant? And it was because I had the word of God. I was putting it in my heart. I was putting it in my mind. I'm going to change it. I was putting it in my mind. It was in there with all the other thoughts that I think. And that's so cluttered. But I had to utilize it and purposely put it in my heart. Purposely yeah. meditate on it. Purposely make it relate to me and what I'm going through. Purposely find a, a way to connect it to something that happened to me that day. Or something that I know is going to come up in my life. And actually using it and going out and like, you know what? Okay. I'm not going to conform to my society, Romans 12 and two. So when all my friends go to that party, I'm going to stay home. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Ephesians six talks about the word of God being the sword of the spirit, you know, being the sword, you know, and honestly, we talking about the bedroom, the vacuum cleaner is the word of God. It'll suck up all those problems, all that mess, all the crap that you could be facing in your life. If you just get it in your heart, like Minister Lundell said, go on the website, go on Faith Chapel and go to the website to see these confessions. Yeah, we need to put that in the chat. If there's any chat hosts that's got that link, we need to put that in the chat right yeah. now because we need that. We need a we need a vacuum cleaner. We need a new one because a lot of the vacuum cleaners we got is the vacuum cleaner that's not sucking things up, but it's bringing stuff more dirt into the house more dirt into the room and then because it's leaking out of our hearts because it gets so overflowing it's so cluttered that it starts leaking out of our hearts and so the things we say end up getting in somebody else's house or somebody else's heart so it's just all about having that sword of the spirit or as we're talking about now the vacuum cleaner let that be the word of god hey god is saying something to us about this heart we must do something, pay attention to our hearts. Listen, um, because if our hearts are, are open to him, our hearts are clear and we can really see him, see him in others, then we will go out and bring others to him. Hey, check out this verse um, as we go to this next clip. And... I just want you to think about your own heart. Think about your own heart. The scripture says in verse 25, the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and the country roads and tell the people there to come because I want my house to be full. Jesus wants his house to be full and he wants to use us to help feel the house, but we must make sure that our hearts are, are clean and that our hearts are open and not blocked. 
to get people to him because Jesus welcomes everyone to the table. Now, if you are ready to give your tithes and offerings, then repeat this after me. I commit to being a tither and a giver. I believe that I am blessed above and beyond. I commit to live in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life. Now, if you desire to give, there are four ways you can do so. You can do it through the app, you can mail it, you can text, or you can give online. So we have a few announcements before we close out this time for service this morning. So make sure that you all download the Faith Chapel app so that way you are aware of any and everything that is going on in the church. And at Tuesday night groups instead of Thursday nights, we will begin 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern. And always remember guys, God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye! Bye.